Hey guys, I'm Joel. In this video, I'm gonna be working on the E46 again, and I'm gonna be doing some preventative maintenance. The cooling system on these cars are notorious for going bad, especially this expansion tank right here. It's plastic, it's brittle, and now that it's winter, whenever the car heats up and it cools down, that plastic goes through a lot of abuse, and I wanna replace everything before anything happens because if this car overheats, it's basically junk. <laughs> the heads warp so easily because the heads are aluminum. So I wanna try and prevent any kind of overheating as much as possible. I got that box there from FCP Euro. There's $300 worth of maintenance in there. So everything is gonna get replaced. And just to show you guys, I have a spreadsheet with all the costs that I have into this car, including the car. Right now I'm currently $5,300 into this car with including the price of the car i got it for a thousand dollars and i did a full manual swap five speed with a zf transmission ebay stage three six puck clutch with a lightweight flywheel it was four hundred dollars for that whole kit it has a welded diff stock diff that came in the car it's 363 automatic brand new everything along the whole drive line gibo center support bearing all the bushings for the transmission shifter the transmission shift pins, which is notorious on the ZFs for going bad. I did all of that. The bucket seat, the wheels, all that stuff is included on in this price. So I think that's pretty good for a car that's almost fully ready to get slid around for hopefully many, many events. We're almost there. I'm not trying to make it as budget as possible, but I also don't want to break the bank. I still want to be a nice daily. What I mean by that is I have stuff like this CarPlay double din radio in here. And I just have stuff to make it a little bit more luxurious for me as a driver. The last thing that's left is all the bushings in the rear end need to be completely refreshed. I have all of the bushings to do that. I just need to wait till I'm physically better. That's all I'm waiting for and then we can go out, street drift, have some fun and make some videos. This is my first big project being back out of surgery and oh my god, getting the car jacked up right here so the light is in the engine bay. It took four tries realigning it. And I'm exhausted. Took way too long, like an hour and a half. <laughs> First, I have to drive the car up onto this little piece of wood, put the jack under here, jack it up, then slide this one in. Then once this is slid in, the jack can come in, jack the front subframe up, and then once I jack it from the front, I have two jack stands on both sides. So I did that three times trying to get it in position so we have good lighting. I hope you guys appreciate that, yo, because look, this is beautiful. Like, I could see everything. This is so nice. As always, I got everything off of FCP Euro. They have a lifetime warranty as long as you own the car. So it's a no-brainer to buy from them. So everything's just laid in here. It's kind of the norm of how everything comes. If you guys don't have one of these, I always say you need one. Go to Home Depot and get a all-purpose plastic tub. It's in the gardening section and it's perfect for emptying coolant. Go ahead, put it right under there and anything that falls from the radiator and under the engine is gonna fall into there. I just want to take the belt off real quick. I definitely should have gotten a new belt, but I forgot. Should have loosened that before undoing the belt. There we go. Now you undo the bolts. Keeping the belt on, but off the tensioner is definitely the way to do it. Just giving it a little twist behind the pulley, persuading it off. Now I can come in and take the water pump out. Now with the bolts for the water pump, pulley just thread them into the actual water pump to push the pump out there's a closer look there's two bolts right here oh 
Oh no, it's green. So all that splash is getting caught up in the bucket. It was a plastic impeller. So this is the original factory water pump. I'm really happy that I'm doing this. I got the new pump out on the right right here. And yeah, this definitely is plastic on the left. You can just see the size difference between the plastic and the metal. I was just taking the thumbnail and it got everything out. And this trim is for a manual transmission right here. So that's gonna delete that automatic transmission cooler down there because that cooler has two ports in this on the automatic version. So this is gonna get rid of that. I'm gonna dip my finger in here, grab some coolant and coat the O-ring in hopes to not pinch it on the way in. Can't go in dry boys. It's upside down. You just have to get one started, tighten it down a little bit just to get it on and then get the opposite one. I'll do the one under it now, tighten it a tiny bit. There we go. I tightened the left two a little bit and then loosened them. It wore the O-ring in just enough so that I can get the other side in as well. Water pump bolts only go to 10 Newton meters. They're very small bolts that do not take a lot of torque. I'm gonna go ahead and put the pulley back on just so that the whole water pump system can be done. It's not a perfect square. I had it the pulley on wrong, so just moved it one bolt hole over, and now all the bolts are threading in like usual. There we go. Water pump is installed. Belt is back on. I do want to take these clips off for the radiator hose. I can't get that one off the radiator, so I'm gonna try and take it off from over here and see if I can figure out how this comes out. Okay, so it's literally just by pulling it off. Here we go. Oh, this actually looks like it was replaced, so I probably was good leaving it, but whatever. This crusty ass hose is out with that temperature sensor right there. I should also explain that I want to wait on upgrading the radiator because I don't know if I'm gonna get a CSF radiator because it might be overkill. I don't know. So I'm just gonna wait it out. And if I do end up getting a CSF one, it'll be in the spring or when this radiator is needed to get taken out. So I'd rather wait on that. There was no issue with the radiator, so I'm just gonna leave it in. Every time you disconnect something, there's just always more water. This tab right here looks really tempting to pull on it, so. Yeah, I'm guessing that's what it is for. Another waterfall. <laughs> Here we go. Ow. I just put my knuckle into that pulley. This thermostat comes with a gasket already in it, so it's ready for install. Again, these 10 millimeter bolts. Basically any 10 millimeter bolt on the entire engine, inside and out, is a 10 Newton meter torque rating. Oh, I think this went behind that bracket. Whatever. I reached around and I'm getting the bolts off to take this thing off. Pried the pr bracket out from the bottom. This little piece was going into the radiator, so I'm there with a screwdriver, just pried it out and it came out. I got the bottom radiator hose right here. I'm gonna put the coolant temperature sensor in right now. This is keyed, so this only goes in one way. There we go. 
open them before putting it in. It's in now. I can plug the sensor in. This sensor is what turns on the electric fan. So if this doesn't work, you won't have an electric fan, which is really not good. Car will start overheating for that. This little plunger thing is an automatic transmission cooler thermostat. So I'm assuming with the manual one, I just leave it empty like that since I don't have that anymore. I thought that this thing had to pop a cover off, but apparently it's just magnet driven and it wasn't going in. So I just forced it around a little bit and it ended up turning. So the expansion tank is ready to go in. I got this clip on from the old one. So that's the end of that. Everything has changed, everything is new, except for the belts. I did forget to get new belts, but the good thing about doing this early is now I have spares. So radiator hoses, expansion tank, and thermostat. But not the water pump. I don't wanna ever use this again. So that's going in the trash. But I can keep this in a nice corner for a rainy day. Yeah, you're a pussy. Damn. Yep. I got some distilled water from water. Walmart. <laughs> I like to keep a few of these on deck because you always got to mix them 50-50 with BMW. It comes straight coolant from the factory. I got this fan in the back right here. So hopefully the exhaust will get pulled out of the garage in the garage halfway so that wind doesn't bring it back in. So now I can try and bleed this coolant with the car jacked up. This is the benefit. You always want to jack a BMW up when you're trying to bleed the coolant because this cars just don't like getting bled sometimes. I'm going to put some water in it first just to make sure that there's no obvious leaks. I'm going to go turn the car on real quick. You can see this is just pure coolant. This is not watered down at all. BMW blue coolant does not come watered down. Oh no, it's leaking. No! What is that from? The fucking drain from the radiator. Oh no. That's not good. Because I just put a hella coolant in it. Oh my god. I tightened it really tight when I put it back on because it just felt really weird. So. I cranked it on and it was leaking. So I backed it up a little bit and then I tightened it again, but not very hard. I just very lightly tightened it. And it's not leaking anymore. So I'm guessing I just had it too tight. Now I can actually start bleeding it, but I didn't have to drain it. It still has some coolant in there, so that's good. I can pour the rest of the water in now because it's not leaking at all. So it's very good news. What is this shit leaking from? What the fuck is all that? Bro, I literally can't even see. Wait, what? I'm so confused. What is that leaking from? What? Why am I letting it idle still? This is too much. A leak that strong looked like it had to be a puncture in the radiator behind the shroud. I'm going to take the shroud off and see if I see anything. But like, it was a constant stream coming out and it didn't happen until I started adding more coolant so maybe once the coolant level got to that certain point it just started leaking I made some more room I think I'm gonna be able to get a better view here but I don't see anything on the radiator maybe it must be the bottom of the expansion tank to the bracket right here but I don't know why it wouldn't start pissing like that from when I first filled this up so I'm gonna turn it on again and see what happens I'm gonna leave it on with no fan just to see where the leak is coming from but I honestly am stumped right now I have no idea 
It's a constant drip. From where though? There's an open hole. I knew it. Oh shit. Hold on. Okay, so there's that hole right there, but what is that hole for? I'm so confused. I'm gonna go do some research. I cannot, I don't know what the hell is going on. I was working on the 46 here over the holidays and it's finally no longer the holidays. It's Monday. I can head over to FCP and get a new drain plug because apparently the drain plug between radiators of an automatic and a manual are different. The automatic has the long drain plug so that it allows coolant to flow to the automatic transmission cooler and the manual has a short plug it's not how you would normally think it is the short one actually blocks off the radiator flow but i want to wish you guys all a happy new year happy holidays and all of that i'm so excited and i can't wait for what's to come this year because i have a lot planned this year and i hope you guys are all here to watch it with me so Let's go have some fun. I just, honestly, I want to have as much fun possible this year while bringing you guys along. Let's go to FCP Euro real quick. They're only 40 minutes away, so that's the best part. I made it. I picked up what I needed. While I was here, I also got the AC belt and the drive belt for all the other power steering alternator, water pump, all that stuff. But the main reason why I came is this thing right here. I'm praying that this goes in. So now I have to take this thing off. It should only be like a quarter turn. Now, since it already did that quarter turn, it's not gonna keep going. I have to actually pull it out. Oh! Fuck. No! How am I gonna get the rest out? This is what I'm working with. That plug is stuck inside of there and I'm trying to pull it out from the bottom, but I can't really grab onto it. And when the plug is all the way down, that's as far as it'll go down. I have that in there. So I'm trying to take the O-ring off and see if I can snake it out. It's always so hard to see when I'm down here cause I'm not right under it, but it looks like there's a piece of plastic stuck in the groove where it locks itself in. Oh, there's a lot of plastic actually. What the hell? I took the plastic out. Let me see if it's going to actually come out now. Oh, let's go. Yes. There it is. So a piece of plastic on this side right here, right where my finger is, was holding it in. But I can't see it because my head is looking at it from this way. But I guess I just got to have better situational awareness because once I edit the videos, I notice so much stuff like... This was such an obvious leak when I saw it on video, but when I'm down here, it's so bad. So right here, this is the automatic one. The second one of these little things that hold it in was what broke off and that's what was holding it in. So if I would have gotten that off from the start, that would have came out easily. But the difference between the two is here. This is the manual one. It'll just get put in and it's like an eighth turn in and it locks itself in. But this will stop the flow of that coolant going to the hole there that it was leaking from. Real quick, since there is an O-ring, I'm just going to dunk it in that coolant. Let it get nice and lubricated. Okay, no, okay. So now real quick, give it that little turn till it stops. There we go. I'm not putting any extra force on that. That's locked in. The belts are extremely simple on these cars, which is always a plus. Just put a T50 in there. Pops right out. The AC belt was definitely cooked. Oh. Hello, arm crossing. There we go. This belt is off too. Accessory drive wasn't that bad. There's just tiny little cracks in it. But it's good to do them both now. For these belts and that little bung, it was $29. Add that to the budget. Nothing like that, no. Ugh. Damn, that belt is so tight. All new belts. Now let me try and bleed this again and hopefully. This is the last time I want to drive this thing. That is a good sign. 
Not a single drop yet. I'm not gonna speak too soon. I forgot, now that that big, big leak is fixed, I can put the E-fan back in. Just like this. Boom! By the way, some of you guys asked me on the Drift Event video what I was using to scan the car. And I'm using Car Scanner Pro. I paid a few dollars for this app. And then this is gonna be linked in the description. This is a Wi-Fi reader because I have an iPhone. If you have an Android, you use a Bluetooth reader. But this is what I use. Just plug it in real quick. I go to my Wi-Fi, make sure that it's selected. She's going. Live data, separated. And then coolant temp, there we go. So it's at 136 degrees. I'm just gonna wait till this gets up to temperature and then it holds operating temperature. That's when I know it's gonna be good. Also on the max speeding rods, this top nut was loose. So I'm gonna tighten it real quick. That's why it was clunking. I'm sure it's just spinning the whole rod, but I, it has to be at least a little bit tight now, right? It's definitely not loose, but how tight is it? This could be really bad for it, I don't know. You can see it spitting out from there, which means air is coming out, which, that's a good sign. Oh, damn! <laughs> I missed so bad. <laughs> I don't know how long it's been, but you could probably see in the clip before. Having an app that you can read this temperature off of is so useful when you're trying to bleed the coolant. Cause you know exactly what's going on and you're not guessing, you're not running around in and out to see if it's good and all that. The coolant's at 180 degrees, so I'm gonna put this all on full heat to get coolant flowing through the heater core. And whenever the bottom radiator line starts to get hot is when you know that the thermostat is open and coolant is flowing to the whole engine. Right now, I can put my hand on it and it's not hot. That's how you know that the thermostat has not opened yet. And once that opens and there's no more air coming out through here, you know that you're all set. It's not really going up past the 186-ish. Right up here was the highest it's been. So I'm gonna turn it off and let it sit for a tiny little bit. Because sometimes it burps when you turn it back on. So after this, it should be all set. It went down a tiny little bit. Yeah, it went down a little more too. It's now 450 over half an hour later. And the bottom hose is finally, it's not even that hot. It's warm, but I'm done with this. I'm over it. Everything appears to be pretty good, no leaks anywhere after over half an hour. So I can put everything back together with confidence and go for a little drive. big space so I could do a second gear. I'm gonna try and swing some wide ones right here. It's so bumpy through there, bro. tire pressure is in it I was fully matted in second <laughs> it was going a little bit but I think the tires are very aired down right now <laughs> oh it's so cold it's like 15 degrees outside that different pavement level was throwing me everywhere oh my god that was a huge pothole can't wait to do the subframe in this thing so I don't have a whole bunch of wheel hump I want to check the tire pressure because that first one felt extremely grippy yeah it's at 34 33 psi so that's pretty low i think people run it at like 50 60. what size is this 205 45 17 tire 
And as you can t currently tell, there's a little bit of toe in, the tire's pointing inwards a little bit on the front, and there's a lot of camber on it. So hopefully soon, once I redo the rear end, I can get to zero camber to try and even out that tire wear. Yeah, 33 PSI. So those are some grippy donuts. Should have put air in it before, but I didn't even think about it. It was a very good test though, because that second time around when I was in second gear, it felt really bad. The whole suspension and just the whole car jumping up and down, it felt horrible. So I'm hoping when I do the rear end, it'll clean some of that up. The wheel hop is unbearable with the diff bushings. The front two diff bushings are completely shot. So stay tuned for when I fix all that. We got a lot of stuff planned this year. I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you for watching. I appreciate you all.